Welcome to Integration TV. In this four episode special, we travel to Somalia to explore our beautiful homeland and learn about the people who are working hard to rebuild our country. Join me, your host, Paula Naleya, on this exciting journey as I meet the change makers, dreamers, and lovers of life in Mogadishu. On this week's show, we'll explore Turkey's unique relationship with Somalia and learn all about the developments being made in the country. We'll also travel to Ankara and see what the future holds for these two nations. This is Integration TV, the first English television for Somalis around the world. I left Somalia as a six-year-old girl, and like so many Somalis around the world, my memory of my home country is hazy. I've always dreamed of returning, and now I finally have the opportunity. I'm returning to Somalia to examine the unique efforts the Turkish government has been undertaking to help rebuild my homeland. As the wheels of my plane touch down in the capital city of Mogadishu, I'm excited to start my journey and see the progress that's been made. Coming back to Mogadishu, I didn't know what to expect. The first thing that struck me was the beauty of the ocean. It's easy to forget before the war, Somalia was a popular tourist destination because of its oceanfront vistas and rich culture. But driving through the streets, you can't help but feel surrounded by destruction. Everything is destroyed. The buildings are scarred by years of war, and just four years ago, Somalia was experiencing the worst famine in its history. The death toll eventually reached 260,000 people, half of them under the age of six. It was then Turkish Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan who brought this famine into international spotlight. Erdogan was the first non-African leader to visit the country in over 20 years. He wanted to destroy the perception that it was too dangerous to visit Mogadishu. And so he opened an embassy and made it a priority to help the country and its people. I traveled to Turkey to meet with Dr. Mehmet Askan, a professor of international relations and a senior researcher at the Foundation for Political, Economic and Social Research in Ankara. He explained that unlike other countries, Turkey decided to operate directly from Mogadishu. And Turkey went to the areas, dangerous areas, where well, the other organizations, United Nations and other states did not even go. They operated from, from Kenya. Turkey operated from Mogadishu, from inside. That has been also, that made difference. I mean, you can go and talk to people straight and listen to their problems and immediately report to Ankara what's the problem and Ankara can send immediately uh, to, to find some solution. In September 2011, Kani Turin became Turkey's ambassador to Somalia. Knowing that on-the-ground work was imperative to fighting the famine in the country, Torin decided to relocate to Mogadishu. Being uh, inside a war zone and uh, working in that situation, it was uh, a big experience. Turkey's first priority in the country was to deliver emergency humanitarian aid. More than $350 million worth of food and supplies were delivered directly to the people who needed it. At the end of this intensive work, the United Nations officially announced that uh, now the uh, famine problem has gone in Mogadishu. But solving the famine crisis was just the first step. Providing emergency food and medicine, while essential in the short term, would not create a sustainable path forward for Somalis. As soon as we started the humanitarian uh, uh, work, also in the meantime, we started the planned development work. Because you cannot continue just humanitarian projects. You need to start the development aid so people can start, you know, can get jobs, can work with the, uh, uh, with the companies, so they will not need humanitarian aid anymore. After more than 20 years of war, the country was in a desperate need of new infrastructure to allow citizens to begin rebuilding their lives. 
Looking at this scene from the Main Street Mokdu show four years ago, it is easy to see why building new roads was an immediate priority. For the city to start healing, residents and businesses needed a way to get around safely. Today, you can see the difference. Mokdusho's new Friendship Road is 23 kilometers long with 736 light posts and connects the city center to the airport. Whereas before the roads were empty, now there's a frenzy of activity. The lack of a modern international airport was another obstacle to development in the country, but not anymore. With heavy investment from Turkey, navigation systems have been modernized and security weaknesses have been eliminated at Aden Adey Airport. This opened the country up to international flights. After almost 20 years, Somalia's connection with the world and international community has been re-established. Another priority was providing access to health care and training medical personnel. Somalia's public health care system was largely destroyed during the Civil War. The limited access to health care has been devastating. According to UNICEF, the child and maternal mortality rates for Somalia are among the highest in the world. One out of every 12 women die due to pregnancy-related causes and one out of every 10 Somali children will die before their first birthday. One of the first healthcare projects to be undertaken was the reconstruction and modernization of Digfer Hospital, which began in 2013 thanks to an agreement between the Turkish and Somali governments. The doors to the 200-bed training and research hospital opened in January 2015. Renamed after the Turkish president, it has an annual operating budget of $135 million and is now East Africa's most technologically advanced medical facility with world-class equipment. It's been estimated that the UN has donated more than $55 billion in aid to Somalia in the last 20 years. However, in much less time and with only a fraction of the funds, it's been Turkey who's had an immediate impact on the everyday lives of Somalis and the future of the country. I'm in the middle of the city center and um, this is where the former parliament used to be. And there's, it's kind of sad to see that there is so much destruction, but in a weird way, it's a lot of beauty in it because you look at it and you see that there's so much hope for the rebuilding of our nation. Um, it's just, to me, I just kind of got a little goosebumps standing right here because I feel like it's the Alan Kisomarida, it's right there. Look at these kids playing with the flag and then you're among all these buildings that basically are crumbled. So it's a little emotional for me right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing, you look at these young people that are standing here and I just look at it like, where is the hope for the future for our country? It's these young people and I don't know. What are we gonna do guys, seriously? We need to really, really think about these young people and what opportunities we can give them as diaspora coming back into this country. After so much destruction in our country, Turkey's investment in infrastructure has shown immediate results in improving the lives of citizens. But for Somalia to find a long-term path to success, there needs to be opportunities for our children. It's these future generations that have to be protected and educated for Somalia to grow and prosper. As always, the casualties of war are children. It's estimated there are over 500,000 orphans in Somalia, and 50% of the children between the ages of 5 to 14 go to work rather than going to school. 
Faced with this pressing need, the Turkish government established the Anatolian Training Center and Orphanage in Mogdusho as the first step to tackle this enormous problem. Here, 1,500 lucky students and 400 orphans are getting another chance at life. These children have access to things many children take for granted. In this safe environment, kids get a chance to play, to grow up healthy, be inspired by knowledge, and to receive guidance from teachers and imams. This will be a model for future projects. Turkey's efforts to provide access to education for Somalis extends beyond the borders of our country. Many students from Somalia continue their higher education at one of Turkey's numerous universities thanks to the Turkish scholarship program. Turkey's building Somalia is not only construction building. Turkey is building the future generation of Somalia. That's why many people has been brought here to Turkey for education, for master, for PhD. For this, these people will be ruling Somalia in coming, in coming 10, 20, 20, 30 years. We travel to a university campus in Ankara, Turkey, to speak directly with the students who have received scholarships and to hear their perspective on the importance of education. Talento wa muhim wa hakaliya imanta Somali la degla alay wa hawaye and generation ku gudun bay ila shay ila sayashin ku gudun marki ay dawladu dhaxa burburday ma aysan helin fursada ay tacliin ku bartaan in aniga waxa ardayd ugu fiican chemistry marka dhigan jira high school ka saas darteed waa doorto inaan chemical engineer dhigto aan sababo badan aan doorto waxa tahay Soomaali markaan joogno and we don't macallimiin fiican ma haysan oo chemistry fiican noo baro practical ma haysan wax badan ma haysan markastana waxaan ula keena daawo dhacdo cunto dhacdo wax kasta la keena waxa jeclaaday inaan dadkayga caawiyo waxyaalo badan ka caawiyo hadee noqoto farmasi hadee noqoto cuntada wadanka soo galayso hadee noqoto nafsin ahaankayga inaan waalidkayga wax u taro badana dadku waxay focus ka saaraan inay bartaan faculty kala duwan wadanka wax u baahan yahay waxyaabo noocaas ah so ani waxa door bidaa inaan diinta si deeply u barto in maadaama hadirtaan caalamka dhan dadka Islam ke ya Muslimi tu lagi amin sih ayat itu hujan. Ina din Islam ke din atau argi kehisat tahai. En saya sedar tu itu ha jelas. Ina din tu tu sedat ke Muslim ke hujan. Ina din tu ina din atau biswal ayat tahai atau din nabat ayat tahai. Awak hendak tanya international relations? Amu sedar lawa kana hidup ke alam juga. Sebab tu aku dor tu ina wajah tahai. Wajah tu ala tahai. Madam aku anwadan kala imidai. Ina hado tu ala kesakai hidup ke wadan kena. I'm not one of those people who are planning to remain here when they finish their education. My basic aim is to go back and share whatever I learn from here with my people. Those people who never had the chance to go out of the country and learn. Education is the starting point, is the foundation of developing a country, of building a country, of developing an economy of a collapsed country. So education means everything. The only weapon that we can use to develop and re rebuild, restart, reestablish our country again. In Turkey, Somali students receive more scholarships than any other African nation. It will take time, but by providing access to higher education, Turkey is starting a wave of positive action. We will increase the relationship and inshallah, particularly for the economic investment, these people will be a bridge between two countries. This will make Turkey-Somalian friendship uh, long-lasting. I think this part uh, will not see immediate result right now, but after 20 years, we will see it. For example, I have, I mean, last time when I visited Somalia, Somalia I come across someone who studied in Turkey in 1991. And uh, he had he opened a restaurant. Now he has he runs some here he runs a company in there. So this we see only after 20 years, 30 years with education dimension. But I think this will be one of the biggest social construction of Somalia, helped by Turkey. I mean we have uh, more than more than thousands of studying in, in Turkey right now from Somalia. As these educated individuals return home, they'll become the teachers of future generations, creating a skilled workforce that can contribute to the rebuilding of our country. 
Somalia is starting to move again on better roads. Its people have access to health care. Children are given opportunities to better their lives, and educated Somalis are returning home. All of this positive momentum is driving the growth of our country and its economy, and this is another area that Turkey is trying to support by encouraging foreign private investment. So we brought four Turkish companies directly working in Mogadishu, and other companies also now are coming. So we want to improve the infrastructure, so then those companies can start work with Somali counterparts and then increase the job market also, so people can get jobs. If stability increases, I think there will be more Turkish companies investing and creating jobs in Somalia. Uh, perhaps in this, uh, I mean, in this field, there would be more cooperation between Somali diaspora and Turkish government as well, or Turkish businessmen. Perhaps joint investment would be much, much better because uh, that would be much more helpful and sensitive to the local dimension as well. Uh, perhaps in five years' time, we will see more Turkish investment with the help of Somali diaspora as well. Encouraged by the improvements in the country, members of the Somali diaspora are returning home to contribute to the rebuilding process. We went to meet with Abdi Dore, the managing director of the Somali Chamber of Commerce, to get his perspective. Somalia is now a lot of people are coming back and building their homes. Children are coming back and even families. So what countries are the Somali diaspora coming back from to start businesses? Number one is UK. <laughs> number one particularly that come from London. And it's a huge number of, of Somali diaspora groups there. And secondly, these are other countries from Europe, uh, Scandinavian and, and other countries. Uh, but if you look at North America, particularly Minneapolis, the people are coming from there too. Uh, Canada is, is number four, maybe wow. from Toronto. Yeah. But Arab countries, even African countries, Uganda and Kenya, they are investing here. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So Somalia is the hot spot. It is, it is. Really. This is a good sign. It is another step towards standing independently as a community and taking control of our future. This is a goal shared by Turkey. I think in five years time, uh, Turkey will be staying behind and Somalians will be in this process. For example, there are now four hospitals are built in Mogadishu, some of them just completed. And Turkey will transfer these, these hospitals in five years' time to Somali authorities, Somali Minister of, Minister of Health and other, other authorities there. And they will be running these, these buildings, these schools and these uh, and these facilities, I mean, Turkey will not be running. Turkey perhaps will be sub still be supporting, you know, in terms of equipment, in terms of uh, doctors and, uh, I mean, other resources, but the old management will be transferred to Somalians, and Somalians will be taking over their own country, ruling their own. That's, and that, I mean, in five years' time, I see less Turkish involvement at, or less Turkish visibility, but continue Turkish support, but more Somalians leading the process and taking over all the process and control and taking decision in this process. A peaceful and prosperous Somalia governed by Somalis. This is the vision that unites us. My hope for Somalia is that one day every child born here will have the opportunity to live up to their full potential. And every member of the diaspora will feel safe if they choose to return to rediscover their home. My generation never got to experience this beautiful country before it was ravaged by war and I hope my children have a chance to run safely through its streets and splash in the waves on its beaches. Perhaps the first step is forgiveness, to heal the old wounds and to allow the people of Somalia a chance to connect. Islamic motivational speaker and life coach, Brother Mohammed Dini, shared a few words of healing with us. If you don't forgive for that which has happened to you, especially in Somalia, you're going to live a very sad life and end your days in a very sad way. Because what has happened here, a lot has happened here. A lot of transgression, a lot of oppression, a lot of bloodshed. And you don't even know who did what to you. Millions of people took part in it. If you were to go out and, and, and look and, and ask for forgiveness, you really don't know who did what to you. So to move on and to let things be, because Allah ultimately is going to call everyone into account for what they have done. So having full faith in Allah 
translates into you moving on and forgiving that which you can't even do anything about. You know, they say this resentment, feeling uh, uh, this uh, heavy weight in your heart to get back at people who did uh, bad things to you. Uh, one of the scholars said, it leads you to live a life that is in perpetual depression. Perpetual depression. You're sad every day, every single day. So to move on and to know that Allah is aware of everything. Allah was here 10 years ago. He was here when whatever bad thing has happened to you has happened to you. And I promise you everything is counted with Allah and everyone is going to be held accountable for what they have done. So a person who moves on shows a very strong faith. And having strong faith is what leads you to sit under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for us uh, Somalis here in Somalia, there's just no other way for anyone to go about this. You can't go to court. Even if you went to court, the court would do what? Would you call 10, 000, 10 million people into, uh, into, into the court and uh, ask them who did what to you? Yeah. Sometimes if you can find out who did what, you know, if there are small troubles here and there, I guess there are times when you can uh, go through the process and, and, and the rule of law and all that stuff. But honestly, uh, having family myself, every Somali person has family who's been wronged and a family member who probably has done wrong to others. Move on. Allah is going to deal with this. Allah will judge everyone. And Allah will give you everything that belongs to you. Never is anything that's yours going to go to someone else. And the justice of Allah is ultimate justice. You will see it in this world, but you will also see it in the afterlife. Join us next week as we meet a motivational speaker changing the hearts and minds of Somalia's youth. We'll also speak with professional women about their challenges returning to Somalia and meet one of the country's most experienced doctors. Catch us next week and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest episodes. This is Integration TV, the first English television for Somalis around the world. <laughs> What the cave show her way and do the other good? What the cave? What the cave up for Sato Barani, a very gobble when the cave? What the cave was a lap where Alaska, you are for the weather cave? What the cave for me, you are away and weather cave? What the cave where her case of a very sail away and weather cave? What the cave where I don't know where you want to go with the cave? What the cave will tell you of your way and weather cave? What the cave will be for us? What the cave?